Good evening. This is All India Radio and I am Valsa Williams with the news at 9. The headlines. Nearly 74% voter turnout recorded in Rajasthan and 67% in Telangana in assembly elections. Prime Minister Narendra Modi says India's efforts to deny economic offenders safe havens abroad will succeed. Government appoints Dr. Krishnamurthy Subramanian as the chief economic adviser. In men's hockey World Cup, Australia records a comprehensive 11-0 victory against China. And in cricket, Australia trails India by 59 runs at stumps on the second day of the Adelaide Test. Assembly elections for 199 seats in Rajasthan and 119 seats in Telangana ended peacefully this evening. Around 74% voter turnout was recorded in Rajasthan till 5 p.m. today. In the last assembly elections, the polling percentage was 75.23%. Briefing reporters in New Delhi, Deputy Election Commissioner Sandeep Saxena said voting was very peaceful in the state, barring some small incidents. There were still queues when we got the last turnout and this turnout what has been reported at 5 p.m. is likely to go up. The tentative figure is 72.62% and uh, since polling is going on, by late night it will be over and it is likely to go up. Our Jaipur correspondent has filed this report about the key contests in Rajasthan. All eyes are now on 11th December when counting will take place. Eyes are on some eminent seats where top leaders are contesting. These include Jadra Patan, where main contest is between CM Vasundra Raji and Manvendra Singh, who is the son of former member of BJP, Jaswan Singh. On top seat, senior leader of BJP, Yunus Khan, is contesting against PCC chief Sachin Pilot. On Sardarpura seat, contest is between former chief minister Ashok Gehlot and BJP's leader Sambhu Singh Kheta. Sir, besides these seats, Panganir, Kimsar, Udaipur and Nathdwara are among some key seats where senior leaders Ghansham Tiwari, T.P. Joshi, Girja Vyas, Gulab Chand Kataria and Hanuman Peniwal are in fray. Jitendra Divedi, AIR News, Jaipur. In Telangana, 67% voter turnout was recorded. In the last assembly polls, the voting percentage was 69.5%. Talking to reporters, Deputy Election Commissioner Omesh Sinha said the polling was peaceful barring a few incidents. Till now, the figures which we have received for the turnout, we have received the interim figure, 67%, and we will be getting final figure when the parties come back. But till now, we have the information that in some of the polling stations, people are still voting and the final figures are yet to come. Our Hyderabad correspondent has more details. The public mandate and the political future of the 1821 candidates, including 139 women, has been sealed in the EVMs, which will be opened on Tuesday. The top contenders, including caretaker Chief Minister Chandrasekhar Rao, top TRS leaders like K. Tarak Rama Rao and Speaker Madhusudan Achari, PCC President Uttam Kumar Reddy and opposition leader in the dissolved assembly K. Jana Reddy, besides BJP State President, K. Lakshman and MIM leader in the dissolved house, Akbaruddin Bovaisi. Lakshmi, AR News, Hyderabad. Counting of votes in both the states will be taken up on Tuesday along with Chhattisgarh, Madhya Pradesh and Mizoram. A BJP delegation comprising senior BJP leaders J.P. Nadda and Mukhtar Abbas Nakvi today asked the Election Commission to take action against Congress President Rahul Gandhi for allegedly using paid news to influence voters in Telangana and Rajasthan Assembly polls. Talking to reporters, Mr. Nakvi said 48 hours before the close of poll, the Congress chief had given an interview to a Hyderabad-based newspaper and claimed his party's victories in Telangana and other states, citing some poll surveys. He alleged that this was a violation of poll norms as Mr. Gandhi tried to influence the free and fair polls. Mr. Nakvi said the BJP has also lodged a complaint about booth capturing in some areas in Rajasthan and demanded re-polling. Prime Minister Narendra Modi today expressed confidence that India's efforts to deny economic offenders safe havens abroad will show results. 
He was addressing the Jagran Forum organized by the Dainik Jagran Media Group in New Delhi. The Prime Minister said India presented a nine-point agenda to G20 countries, calling for strong and active cooperation to comprehensively deal with fugitive economic offenders. He said India also called for joint efforts by G20 countries to form a mechanism that denies entry and safe havens to fugitive economic offenders. जो आर्थिक अपराध करने वाले भगोड़े हैं उनको दुनिया में कहीं भी सुरक्षित पनागा ना मिले इसके लिए भारत ने कुछ सुझाव अंतर्राष्ट्रीय समुदाय के बीच रखे हैं मुझे विश्वास है कि हमारी ये मुहिम आज नहीं तो कल कभी न कभी रंग लाएगी Mr Modi said the government is working to bring back offenders like Vijay Mallya Mehul Choksi and Nirav Modi for their alleged involvement in bank scams Finance Minister Arun Jaitley today said that demonetization resulted in the formalization of the economy and has increased the tax base addressing the Jagran conclave in New Delhi Mr Jaitley said in the first four and a half years of the NDA government the number of income tax return filers has gone up to 6.86 crores from 3.8 crores in 2014 he said it will be doubled next year to around 7.6 crores Mr Jaitley said due to demonetization 18 lakh people who were not paying income tax came under the scanner The Supreme Court today dismissed a public interest litigation raising allegations against Finance Minister Arun Jaitley relating to the capital reserve of the Reserve Bank of India The Apex Court also imposed a fine of 50000 rupees on advocate ML Sharma who had filed the PIL A bench comprising Chief Justice Ranjan Gogoi and Justice S K Kaul said the court found no reason whatsoever to entertain this PIL. The bench also directed the Apex Court Registry not to allow Sharma to file any PIL till he deposits the fine. Sharma had accused the finance minister of plundering the capital reserve of the RBI. Union Minister for Commerce and Industry and Civil Aviation Suresh Prabhu has said that significant presence of small agricultural holdings in the country presented a unique opportunity for startups to explore various ways to increase crop yield using technology he was speaking at the startup india global venture capital summit held at panaji mr prabhu said in india there are various opportunities for startups which are an engine for development of the country this is all india radio giving you the news For quick news updates round the clock follow us on our Twitter handle at AIR News Alerts. You can also log on to our website newsonair.nic.in. The government today appointed Dr. Krishnamurthy Subramanian as the chief economic adviser. Dr. Subramanian will have a tenure of 3 years. The appointments committee of the cabinet has cleared his name. He is currently working as an associate professor in Indian Bu- School of Business Hyderabad. Armed Forces Flag Day was observed today. On this day the nation expresses gratitude to the martyrs as well as the men and women in uniform. Talking to All India Radio News, Secretary Kendriya Sainik Board Secretariat Brigadier Mrigendra Kumar said it is the responsibility of the citizens to take care of the families of soldiers in case of any eventuality he said it is important to give an assurance to the soldiers who guard the honor of the nation at the borders har din koi na koi shaheed hota hai har din koi na koi apang hota hai har din kisi na kisi parivar ka chulha band hota hai aisi paristhiti mein bahut zaruri hai ki har ek nagrik desh ke इस कोष में अपना अनुदान करें और अनेक माध्यम हैं बने हुए जिससे कि डायरेक्ट बैंक ट्रांसफर है चेक के द्वारा ड्राफ्ट के द्वारा ऑनलाइन पेमेंट के द्वारा वो इसमें दान कर सकते हैं ट्यून इन टू दी एफ एम गोल्ड चैनल ऑफ ए आई आर एट नाइन फिफ्टीन टू नाइट टू लिसन टू दी इंटरव्यू फ्लोरल ट्रिब्यूट वॉज पेड बाई ऑल रैंक्स टू द बी एस एफ मार्टर कांस्टेबल प्रशनजीत बिश्वास एट बी एस एफ फ्रंटियर हेड क्वार्टर्स इन जम्मू टूडे he lost his life in ceasefire violation in sundarbani sector of rajori yesterday the mortal remains of the martyr was sent by air to kolkata and then to his native place in balashisha village of nodia district of west bengal 
Prime Minister Narendra Modi expressed grief over the passing away of Congress MP from Bihar's Kishan Ganj constituency, Mohammad Asrarul Haq. In a tweet, Mr. Modi said his thoughts are with his family and supporters in this hour of grief. Mohammad Asrarul Haq passed away early this morning following a heart attack. He was 76. Benchmark indices today broke their three-day falling streak driven by upbeat global queues and a recovering rupee. On the other hand, Brent crude prices gained to trade around $61 per barrel, a report. The Sensex at the Bombay Stock Exchange ended 361 points or around 1% up at 35,673. The Nifty at the National Stock Exchange also gained 93 points or around 0.9% to 10,694. Rupee at Forex market today appreciated around 10 paise to 70 rupees and 81 paise against the dollar. Gold prices on Friday slipped by 20 rupees to close at 32,100 rupees per 10 grams in the Delhi bullion market. Silver, on the other hand, gained 75 rupees to close at 30 7,700 rupees per kilogram. V. Ravi Kumar with Sanjeev Kumar Singh for AIR News. The United Nations today said that some 3.9 billion people are now using the internet, which indicates that for the first time more than half of the global population is online. The UN Agency for Information and Communication Technologies, ITU, said by the end of this year, 51.2% of people around the world will be using the internet. It also said that while fixed-line telephone subscriptions continue to dwindle worldwide, the number of mobile cellular telephone subscriptions is now greater than the global population. An international group of scientists has urged countries at a UN climate change conference to step up their target for reducing greenhouse gas emissions. Seven scientists from Japan, Germany, France and others made the appeal in a panel discussion at the conference in Poland. They referred to a special report by the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change. It says that by as early as 2030, the average global temperature could rise 1.5 degrees Celsius from pre-industrial revolution levels. They said higher targets for emission reductions are needed to limit the temperature rise under the Paris Climate Change Accord. Australia annihilated China 11-0 in the final Pool B match of the Men's Hockey World Cup in Bhubaneswar today. Black Govers scored a hat-trick. With this victory, Australia tops Pool B with three wins and nine points. In the other Pool B match today, England beat Ireland 4-2. With this win, England with four points from two wins in three matches is placed second in the table. In cricket, Australia were 191 for 7 at close of play in their first innings on the second day of the first test against India at Adelaide today. The hosts trail India by 59 runs. Travis Head and Mitchell Stark were batting on 61 and 8 respectively at the draw of stumps. More news. British Prime Minister Theresa May today sent 30 members of her government around the country to rally popular support to pressure lawmakers to approve her Brexit agreement on leaving the European Union. The Brexit deal is proving a tough sell and May is coming under increasing pressure to delay a parliamentary vote scheduled for next week in hopes of wringing concessions out of the EU. With three days of British lawmakers' five-day debate on the deal complete, An analysis by Britain's Press Association showed that just 27 of the 163 lawmakers who have spoken out indicated they would back the deal compared with 122 who say they will vote against it. That latter number includes 29 members of May's own Conservative Party. And now, before we end the bulletin, the headlines once again. Nearly 74% voter turnout recorded in Rajasthan and 67% in Telangana in assembly elections. Prime Minister Narendra Modi says India's efforts to deny economic offenders safe havens abroad will succeed. Government appoints Dr. Krishnamurti Subramanian as the chief economic advisor. In men's hockey, World Cup Australia records a comprehensive 11-0 victory against China. And in cricket, Australia trails India by 59 runs at stumps on the second day of the Adelaide Test. For details of these stories and more, log on to our website www.newsonair.nic.in. And that is all in the news at 9. Good night.